Hello there, it's Juliana and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through how I created this card using a mix of mediums including texture paste, distress inks, and distress spray stains. During the process of creating this card, I kind of challenged myself to not ink the edges of everything with Vintage Photo, which if you follow me here, you know that I love to ink the edges of nearly everything and I do it on nearly every project. But I wanted to challenge myself here and to kind of go for like a light spring effect on this card. And I think I achieved that, but I still kind of wish I had inked the edges. Some things are just hard to let go of, but I think it's good to try new things and challenge yourself, step outside your comfort zone, all those things. As always, I encourage you to use your stash as you follow along with me but if you're interested in something I used or mentioned in the video, you can find a link to it in the description box below. If you make a purchase using that link, you're supporting me and helping me continue to be able to provide you with all of the content I share, and I really appreciate that support so much. So to create the card today, I'm gonna to be working with um, these supplies here. So I'm gonna go over those with you. So I'm gonna, the paper I'm gonna be using is Distress Watercolor Cardstock, and I'll be working on the smooth side. And it will also be using a piece of just uh, smooth white uh, Nina cardstock uh, to do the uh, matte layer for the card. The die sets that I'm going to be working with are from scrapbook.com and they are the scalloped flower and the market bloom die set. And I'll also be working with the stitching patterns die set. The stamp set I'm going to be working with is also from scrapbook.com. This is the one I'm gonna use for the sentiment and it's called Hello Spring. For the background, I'm gonna be using the scrapbook.com spring flowers stencil. And I'm gonna be using some uh, stamps from Tim Holtz. I'm gonna be working with documented, dearly departed and field notes. The um, inks I'm gonna be working with are um, archival. So you'll just want some sort of permanent ink um, the color I'm just happened to be using is frayed burlap. The other ink pad I'll be using is a distress ink in tumbled glass. I'm going to be working with some spray stains and sponge sugar, squeezed lemonade. I'm not, I don't, I'm not using that one. Um, and I'm going to have uh, shabby shutters and peeled paint. And then I'm also going to be working with some texture paste. This just happens to be scrapbook.com's cloud whip. I need a palette knife. Um, a distress sprayer or some kind of water bottle filled with water and an ink blending tool. And as far as with the stamps and the dies and the stencils, definitely feel free to go through your stash to look for, you know, various flower dies you may already own. Um, maybe some other stitching dies that you have. Um, you could also skip this part. Um, obviously the sentiment find a sentiment set that um, works for the theme of the card you're wanting to do. And with the stencil, you can use any stencil you have on hand. And also with these stamps, the same thing, um, feel free to just select some various um, kind of ephemera type stamps that um, you would wanna use for the background. Now let's get into the making. To get started with the background, I'm going to be working on a piece of Distress watercolor paper on the smooth side, and I've got some archival ink. Um, the color I'm using is frayed burlap, but you can use any kind of permanent ink. And then the stamp sets I'm going to be working with are all from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous, and I've got um, Documented, Dearly Departed, and Field Notes. And I'm going to be using just um, some of these images, uh, this one here and that's like a keyboard and this date stamp. I'm gonna be using the script stamp from this one and then the number, this number stamp from this set. So, you know, you don't necessarily need these sets, just kind of go through your stash and see what, um, you know, variety of images that you have that you might wanna kind of do like a collage type stamping with. And so, yeah, so I'm just going to ink these up and not do like a perfect stamping. I just kind of want a little bit of, of a distressed 
style to it. So again, don't need it to be perfect at all. So even if you know the ink doesn't get all the way over the whole thing, and then as I push it down, I'm not necessarily like pushing everywhere. So it just kind of gives me a light fade of an image there. And I'll do the same thing here with the script stamp. Kind of do that in the upper corner. And as you can see with the placement of these three, I kind of created like a triangle. And that's one of the things that I kind of try to do when I'm um, doing my stamping is I just kind of work in triangles with colors or images to, to kind of help keep your eye moving across the, 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 across the design. The next layer I'm gonna add onto this card is some texture, and I'm gonna be working with scrapbook.com's Cloud Whip, which is just a mixed media modeling paste. So any sort of modeling paste or texture paste will work for this technique. And then I'm also working with their Spring Flower Stencil, which is a three layer stencil that um, kind of does like a leaf, leaves and then a flower and then a center. Um, I am only going to be using this layer of the stencil to um, add some texture to my background here. And then I have um, a palette knife. And I'm also going to be working on the Ulta News um, Ultra Sticky Mat grid. My friend Mary Polanco got me onto this and I have it stored in an 8x8 eight um, plastic sleeve from Totally Tiffany and then I just kept the front piece that comes with the the mat um, just because kind of remind me of the instructions for cleaning and everything and then I took it off of the release paper and then I had a piece of uh, sticker paper. I just cut that down to size and put that in there and then I can easily kind of pull this in and out and use it as needed. So then all you have to do is just lay this down onto your work surface and this is kind of sticky and you know you put your paper on and then nothing's going to move at all and then you can position your stencil wherever you like on the paper. So I'm gonna kinda center the design a little bit as you can see with the repeat here. And then I can push that down and you can kinda see how it sticks, how that changes there and so you know like that the stencil is kinda getting stuck down. And so again, like nothing's gonna move here at all. And when it comes to working with the uh, scrapbooks, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. So when it comes to working with, you can see it's kind of like, kind of almost looks kind of dried out. Um, so all you need to do is just pull out a little bit of it and then put it onto your craft mat. And then you're just gonna kind of like warm it up. It's kind of the way I feel with it. You just kind of stir it around until it starts getting smooth. And once it's smoothed out and kind of more creamy, I find the more you mess with it, the creamier it gets. And then you can take that, just scoop some up on the back side of your palette knife, and then you're just going to rub that over the stencil. And if you need a little bit more, go back and grab some more. I'm not gonna cover the entire stencil. I'm just gonna be covering, I kinda like to just do in the corners. Seems to be my preferred placement. Just kinda again, spreads that design kind of across the page or paper. And you know, you can, um, you know, certainly if you wanted to cover the whole thing, you can. So feel free to, to do that as you like. And then once you kind of get that, get it on there like you know how you want, 
then you've got a little bit left over. If you want, you can you know just kind of scrape that back into the container and then close it up. And then the next thing you want to do is uh, clean your stencil because we are going to use it again after this layer dries. If you want, you could skip the next step. And if that's the case, you can just put this in a pan of water and clean it later on. And then as far as cleaning off the sticky mat, you just um, can use a baby wipe or um, I've been just using like some water. Just you can take this to the, to the sink and just rinse it off and then let it air dry. And then I'm going to set this background to the side to dry and then we'll come back with the next layer. So once that layer is dry, I'm gonna reposition the paper down onto our um, sticky grid. And then I'm going to lay that stencil back over the other stenciled section and I'm kind of offsetting it. So this is where it was. Um, so like this is where I had it originally. And now I'm going to just slide that up and kind of recenter it again. So you can just kind of play around with, you know, seeing where the design is underneath there. So the previous um, design is like in these now covered spots. So we'll push that. Oh, Ziva's having a fit because she can't get in here if you can hear her crying in the background, I'm sorry. Um, And now we're gonna just go back in and add add some more of that paste so we'll kind of work it out again kind of get it nice and creamy and you might be tempted to think oh let's add some water to that to thin it out well, you don't want to do that because then it's gonna seep underneath your stencil so so now I'm just gonna go in and add some stencil and some of that paste to these areas here. And the only thing I have noticed with this is that the center of the stencil kind of wants to pop up a little bit. So you might want to just kind of maybe hold your finger in there to um, keep the center of the stencil down. But I love it um, versus having to um, waste tape to hold it down because I, I used to do tape or adhesive of some sort. And this just, um, I just really like this reusable option. And as you can see, oop, get my finger in there, I did a little bit. Oh well. <laughs> All right, so as you can see though, now we have kind of a repeat of that pattern across the paper and it just kind of fills it in a little bit more. And you could certainly skip this part or, um, you know, and just do the one layer with it. Or you could even add another other stencil design in there in those center spots. And um, yeah, so then we're just gonna set this to the side and let it dry. And then as far as with the stencil, um, again, you just wanna make sure you get this wet into some water or wash it right away. And the same with the um, sticky mat as well. Once the paste is dry, we're going to add some ink smushing to the background. And the color I'm working with here is tumbled glass and I'm using uh, Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Ink for this. Um, any kind of water-based ink would work. 
just need something that is water reactive. So this is a dye ink. So any kind of a dye ink, water reactive ink you could use for this. And so you're just gonna smush that ink pad onto your craft mat. I prefer to work on these um, silicone mats that um, come with the Tim Holtz glass media mat. And they just have like a slight texture. And as you can see, when you spray it with water, the ink kind of like beads up on there and that just can add some really cool texture and stuff. So then you're just gonna take the paper and smush it into the ink. As you can see those little dots, like that's part of what I love about um, doing the ink smushing on this craft mat. And if you want more fluid movement, then you can just take, while that's still wet, just take your water bottle sprayer and just add a little more water to things. Um, if you want, you can add a little bit more ink. I'll just dip this back in there. You can kind of just, you know, continue working with that across the paper. And then I'm gonna just give this a little bit of a dry here. And then um, we'll add another layer of color. Bring my little trivet in here. So this is just a kitchen hot pad trivet that um, I'm using just to kind of help protect my craft mat that I'm working on. This mat tends to get like kind of buckles a little bit when it gets um, heat on it. And even though it does flatten back out again when I'm trying to film and the pads all wonkadoo, it doesn't look real good, so. <laughs> All right, so we're just kind of get that mostly dry. And then I'm going to just dip this back in here again. Get a little bit more ink into some areas that don't have any. And I'm just kind of up some of those little little droplets here it's like and you see those little little pieces there so if it's a big drop you're gonna get a bigger splatter of you know bigger section of color um, like that versus if you have some of these like teeny little drops over here well you'll get you know more of a those little drops of ink there And this section's kind of a little bit dark for me, so I'm just going to dab at that a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm going to call this finished. You can continue to apply more layers of ink, and it'll just kind of build up and get darker as you keep adding color, especially if you stick with the same color. Um, you could also add another color to this, so like if you wanted to... Um, mix some colors I would suggest either go with like a darker blue from tumbled glass which may be like broken china another option you could do would be to go with um, a pink or uh, like kitsch flamingo because pink and blue when they mix together make purple so that would be really pretty on here another option you could do with the blue would be like a green so like um, bundled sage would be pretty and then with that blue and the green mixed together, you get kind of a blue-green color. So when you know when you're looking at trying to maybe mix colors when you're layering inks, think about when you mix the base of that color with the other color, what happens? You know, because if you were to put blue and orange together, you're probably going to get brown because they um, aren't related to each other on the color wheel. So just a little um, thought on that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to um, let finish drying this and then we'll move on to the next step. For this next step, I'm gonna be working with some dyes from the scrapbook.com scalloped flower die set and the market blooms die set some distressed watercolor paper again on the smooth side and i've got my splat box here and i'm also going to be using some distressed spray stain and sponge sugar squeezed lemonade 
shabby shutters and peeled paint. I'm just gonna be creating my own custom colored cardstock. I'm just gonna spray the paper with the ink here a little bit. Get a nice coverage on there. And then I'm just gonna use my water bottle to kind of help get that ink flowing a little bit more. And then you, know, you can kind of, I like to kind of try to dry the center just a little bit here. And then you can get your finger in there and use that to hold it flat. And then you can kind of tilt some of that ink back to the center if you like. And then you can kind of, you know, just let it run around, run across the paper there. If you don't like those big sections of ink, you can always add a little more water. You can also dab at them with a little bit of a paper towel to take some of that ink and lighten it up a little bit. And then if you want this to get a little darker, you can add some more spray ink. This time I'm gonna spray the, the paper with water first and then add a little bit of ink. So just get it a little darker there and then dry that again. There's really no right or wrong way of adding the ink to the paper. You know, you could wet the paper first and then the ink. Um, it just kind of really is just a personal preference on the look you like. And then once this is dry, I am going to um, die cut these flowers from this. And then I'm gonna repeat that same process to do a panel in yellow for this smaller flower here. And then I'm gonna do two panels with, um, one with the shabby shutters and one with the peeled paint to do the leaves in some different colors. So here's a look at the three panels I made. So the sponge sugar, squeezed lemonade, shabby shutters, and the peeled paint. And then I'm going to die cut these with the various flowers and leaves. Before we get into the next part here, I just wanted to let you know that I cut the background paper down to four by five and a quarter inches because I'm going to be um, adding a matte layer behind this um, when I finish the card. So the next thing I want to do is add a little more detail to the background here. And for that, I'm going to use these stitching pattern dies from scrapbook.com. And this is, I'm going to use this little X one here. And these actually cut the paper. They don't emboss it. They actually cut into the paper. So um, to do that, what I'm going to do is position the die on my paper here. I'm gonna use a little piece of mint tape. There we go. To kind of help hold that in position. And then put it on here so it fits. Place the cutting plate down on top. And then I'm just gonna run part way through. I'm not going to run it all the way through because I don't want the cutting all the way across the bottom. Just want a little bit there. So just go partially through. Then show you the effect we get there. So isn't that cool? Like it totally cuts into the paper. I think it's really awesome. And now I'm going to flip that around. Kind of line up the X. with the one below it there and repeat that. And again, I'm not gonna run all the way through, I'm just gonna run it partially through. I'm going to repeat that then up in this corner as well. As you can see, there is how it's cutting. Like it actually, I mean, this is watercolor paper, so it's not going to 
cut completely through all the way. But if you were using thinner paper, it's definitely going to cut all the way through. And I just, I like the, just the little subtle bit of texture it adds to things. So, so yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So here is all of the little die cut pieces that I um, cut out. So to assemble these flowers, I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive here to the center. And just line that up. I'm going to repeat the same thing over on this one. Oh, piece it in the center. If you're wondering about this, this is the My Sweet Petunia Precision Glue Press, and I it's I'm still new using it, um, but first impression, I absolutely love how easy it is to get the glue out. Um, it's just a simple squeeze and it comes right out. Um, you know, even if, um, you know, you let it sit there for a little bit, it, you know, it doesn't clog up right away. You know, you do want to make sure you um, keep the pin in it or put it back or put it back into the little stand. And the stand has like this little rubber stopper in the bottom that if you can, get, if you get this positioned in there straight up and down, it will kind of keep it from getting clogged up on you. I have had it clog up on me already, I'll have to admit, and I know the choose your error um, because I didn't get it in there straight. So I've actually been putting a pin into the glue bottle um, and then putting it into here so that I can still keep the glue in the holder, which I find really, really handy on my desk. So I love that I'm not killing my hand and because a lot of times when I do a lot of adhesive work, um, the squeezing the bottle and trying to get the glue out, when especially when you're using those fine tips, um, it just, my hand gets tired and starts cramping. And so, um, you know, uh, this is, yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend this if you've had that problem and, and or if you have hand issues. Um, the only thing I would say is that, I mean, I think I have pretty large hands and the, the um, grip width that you need on here is pretty big, but you don't, but it doesn't take a lot of pressure to get the glue out. So once you get your hand around there, so even if you needed to use two hands with it, you could. Um, so overall, I would definitely say that I'm a fan of it and I will probably continue to keep using it. Um, for my crafting projects moving forward. All right. So now then with these flowers, I'm gonna add some dimension to them. And the scrapbook.com has adhesives in a bunch of different thicknesses now. So this is just the small and large squares. So they've got large and small squares. They've got um, quarter inch strips. They've got sheets and they come in a variety of sizes. Um, so there are thicknesses. So like they've got one millimeter, two millimeter and three millimeter thicknesses of all of these. And you might wonder why is that necessary? It's absolutely not necessary, but it is nice if you know, you just want a little bit of dimension. This one millimeter thickness is super nice and it's not gonna make your card so big and bulky that it's gonna like potentially make it cost more to mail. Um, but if you wanna build up layers, you know, you can use, you know, this three millimeter thickness or the two millimeter thickness. And it just is nice little options for some varieties if you do like adding dimension to your projects. So for this, I'm just using these one millimeter um, squares. They also have um, rounds as well. And I'm just gonna put that to the center there for this flower and then offset that. And then I can, and then I'm gonna add that to my, my card background. And I'll also, you know, be using some of the adhesive to fill in here with these leaves. I probably have more leaves than I need, but I'll um, kind of futz around with that. And I'm gonna add some centers to these flowers and 
Yeah, so I will be back to kind of show you the finished project here. So here you can see where I've adhered the die cuts to the card front. And I've added some centers that I die cut using the die sets. This um, yellow obviously is the same yellow from the paper that I made for these flowers. And then these is just plain white cardstock that I cut using for those centers. And then I adhered the centers with some one millimeter round foam um, circles. So for the sentiment, I used the scrapbook.com Hello Spring stamp set and I stamped the happy birthday with frayed burlap distress oxide ink and then adhered that with some one millimeter foam strip as well. I actually applied two layers of the foam strip. So one, um, and then I decided I needed it to pop up a little bit more. So this is a situation where I could have used like the two millimeter foam um, strips to adhere that one to get it to the, the height. Because when I was trying to layer it on top of this flower is why I ended up needing a little bit more um, adhesive thickness. For the matte layer on the card, I'm just going to create some coordinating colored card stock. And for that, I'm just going to... Um, ink blend some peeled paint oxide ink onto the edge of a piece of just uh, Nina white cardstock. So since I'm not going to be doing any kind of sprays or water with this, I'm not worried about um, needing to use something that can handle water. So that's why I chose the Nina cardstock. What I love about being able to do this is that I can create colored cardstock that coordinates perfectly with my card instead of having to worry about, oh, do I have any cards, colored cardstock that, that's going to match? And I'm just doing the edge because the center of it's going to be covered. So then we'll just adhere that to the center of that panel and the card will be completed. Here's a look at the finished card. So would you have inked the edges or leave it as it is? I'd love to know your thoughts on that and you can let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stay crafty my friend. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can join me on a more regular basis. Hit the like if you enjoyed this video and if you want to join me on my other social media platforms, you can find the links to those in the description box below. Also, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's something you'd love to share with me and our community. I'll see you in the comments below and in the next video.